station. This is a view. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. This is a view. Listen, I always say it's just copy that. From Africa. Can I? Okay. Can I say <laughs> look, look at the boots. Look over there. There's Africa. <laughs> and they were rolling over. Say yeah. <laughs> Can I come back and they look like me? Here we go. A few seconds. A few seconds. We'll be talking to you. What's wrong with everything being politically correct all the time? We're not a nation of puppets. Okay. So it's about eight months oh. since astronaut Scott Kelly and cosmonaut Mikhail Konikenkov, I think, Good. blasted to the International Space Station on a year-long mission. So we're going to check in with them right now, live from 250 miles above the Earth, Commander Scott Kelly and flight engineer Mikhail Konikenkov. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> So you guys, you're you're all. Hi and welcome aboard the. Welcome aboard the. The. We're floating space station. <laughs> welcome aboard the space station. We have a little bit of a well, delay. There. Uh, yeah, there is a little bit of delay, and what I was uh, what I was going to say is uh, good morning and welcome aboard the International Space Station. So this is, I'm told, going to be the longest expedition that any astronaut has ever taken. What are you working on? What's going on up there? Has anybody tapped on the window and said, hey, we're here? <laughs> well, actually, uh, two of us, uh, Chell Lindgren, uh, the other American astronaut up here, and I were outside the space station uh, on Friday, but uh, we didn't get anywhere close to the windows to to tap on them and look inside. But uh, we're doing a lot of experiments up here. We got 400 different experiments uh, throughout the year I'm here in all different types of, uh, of scientific disciplines. So we have a lot of stuff going on. Mikhail, tell us about your daily routine. What is it like up there? Расскажите, пожалуйста, самый распорядке дня. Как проходит ваш день? Just like in the military, we get up at 6 a.m., then we have fast sleep, we have the morning daily planning conference, and then we start working, and then we hold the evening DPC daily planning conference, and after that, uh, we can continue doing what we were doing during the whole day. You have a beautiful yeah. voice, by the way. I, I want my mic to float in the air like that. Um, Scott, what do you do for fun up there other than drop the mic that never drops? <laughs> well, we are, uh, we're pretty busy, but we do have some, uh, some downtime. Obviously, you need that to kind of refresh your battery um, and recharge, but... Uh, you know, we watch movies, we look out the window, take pictures of the earth, we read. We have the uh, the capability to talk to folks on the ground with a with a uh, kind of a voice over IP telephone and, and email and uh, stuff like that. So uh, we, we got some stuff to do. Okay, so we also know that in space you're weightless. We can see, and this is awesome. Can you demonstrate a few twists and turns for us, please? I've, oh, oh. Awesome. I would like to be weightless, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. It's a whole other conversation. My goodness, you guys, thank you so much. We're so honored that you, you took our call. Uh, we are praying for you, making sure that everything goes well, and keep us safe and keep watch on us. And if you see anybody floating past, tell them we'd love to meet them. Mm. <laughs> thank you so much. And we will be right, right back well with more hot topics. And you'll be the first person we call. Fires back over allegations he lied about. Gentlemen, and good luck. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the view portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from ITV News. Station, this is ITV News at 10. How do you hear me? 
We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Scott and Mikhail, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. It's a uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Obviously, part of the reason you've been up in space there a very long time, part of the reason, as I understand it, for your mission is to assess the impact on you. What do you think at this point we are learning? Well, um, my assumption is we're, we're learning a lot, but, uh, you know, a lot of the data we collect is uh, analyzed on the ground over a long period of time. But, uh, you know, my hope is is the results of that will allow us to, uh, you know, understand better than the, uh, the negative effects of being in this microgravity environment, how do we mitigate those effects, particularly with regards to uh, the uh, impact on our, our, our bones, our muscles, our vision, uh, the effects of radiation on our, uh, you know, at a genetic level. So, uh, you know, the jury's still out, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to learn a lot and it's going to help us get to Mars someday. Can I ask both of you, if you were talking to a young boy or girl in America or Russia or indeed anywhere in the world, and they were asking you to look forward 20 or 30 years into the future of space exploration, what picture would you paint to them of where you think we'll be? из вас, если вы говорили с маленьким мальчиком или девочкой о том, каким будет исследование космоса через 20-30 лет, как бы вы им объяснили, что будет происходить через это время? Ну, наверное, я бы рассказал о том, что следующий шаг в своей жизни будет следующая continue exploring uh, you know 20 to 30 years from now we will have uh, had people on Mars um, you know I'd personally like to also see a, a base on the moon I still think there's a lot of value in going to the moon and having uh, you know there's a lot of science that can be be conducted there but you know our our ultimate uh, long-term goal right now is Mars and I'd like to, to see that happen and I think it will it's been fascinating watching what we've learned about Mars. Uh, this is a very simplistic question, but at this point, do you feel confident there is significant life somewhere else in the universe? You know, I think um, statistically, it's probably very likely. I mean, if you consider the number of stars in the universe and you know the number of potential planets orbiting those stars in this uh, you know habitable zone you know a distance away from 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 the star that would potentially support life i think it's uh, uh very very likely you know my understanding is there are more stars in our in our universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches and deserts on earth so you know when we look out the window here and see how much sand there is out there, that's a lot of stars to consider. Mikhail, none of us really imagine life not being on Earth. You're up there, you're not on Earth, you're looking back. Do you look at us with longing, or are you perfectly happy up there? Михаил, вопрос к вам. Нам даже сложно представить, какой была бы наша жизнь, если мы жили не на Земле. Вот вы сейчас живете вне Земли. Вот когда вы смотрите на Землю, вы скучаете, или какие чувства вы испытываете? Конечно, я скучаю. Это Of course I'm longing. It's a normal feeling for a human being who is not on earth. Even when we are on earth, when we go somewhere on a business trip, we're, we miss home. Here, even though we can see the earth all the time, we cannot touch it. So to say, we don't have grass, we don't have rain, we don't have forests, we don't have trees. So of course we miss the earth. It is a very usual feeling for a normal person. Scott, we've got the climate change uh, talks coming up very soon in Paris. I'm sure you'll be aware of those. 
What do you feel when you look back uh, down on Earth? You long to be here as well, or you're perfectly happy out there? You've been there a very long time. You know, there's uh, one of the cosmonauts that was recently up here, Gennady Padalka, says when he's on Earth, he longs to be in space, and when he's in space, he longs to be on Earth. And, uh, you know, I have a little bit of sense for that right now. You know, we've been up here uh, about seven, a little over seven months with, you know, like almost five months to go. And there's, uh, you know, although I appreciate this experience and, and it's a privilege, I do, uh, you know, look forward to returning to Earth and everything Earth has to offer. Um, you know, it is a very beautiful planet. You did mention the, the climate change stuff. There is you know, evidence of that, that, you know, evidence of, you know, people's presence on Earth and what it does to the uh, atmosphere from here. So, uh, you know, you do have a little bit of different perspective on, on, on that and, you know, the fact that we need to do things to protect our planet. Mikhail, a lot of cosmonauts uh, whose interviews I've read over the years have said that their period in space did change them, sometimes in quite a fundamental way, change their perspective. Uh, would you say that's true of you? Михаил, вопрос к вам. Я читал очень много интервью космонавтов, и они говорили о том, что время, которое они провели на станции, изменило их отношение к жизни, изменило их взгляд на жизнь. То есть можно ли сказать, что у вас происходит то же самое? Да, безусловно, можно сказать. Yes, of course, I believe it's true. Uh, first of all, my perspective and my attitude towards the Earth has changed. I know that a lot of cosmonauts and astronauts have talked about it. It is our home, and of course, while you're on the station, you definitely understand that, and you understand that we have to take care of our Earth, our home, and we see that there are cases of uh, absolutely unreasonable use of resources of our Earth, so I believe this must change. Scott, one of our viewers, we asked our viewers to send in some questions today, and one of them uh, suggested that I ask you, when you get back home to planet Earth, Strange thing to say. When you get home to planet Earth uh, and there are no cameras on you, what's the first thing you'll do? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, we land in, uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, and when we land, there's a bunch of people there to support us. Uh, they take us immediately to a tent uh, when that's, I guess, the first time there won't be be cameras on us and uh, you know that's when we get out of our spacesuits so I guess the first thing I'll do when the, the cameras are off me is is take my spacesuit off will that be a relief finally after all this time I imagine it will yeah absolutely you know it's uh, like I said earlier this is a uh, you know a privilege a uh, incredible experience but they're there do things you there are many things you miss on earth uh, you know the outside the the breeze the sun on your on your face um, you know human contact that is uh, you know the people that you you know you care for on earth you certainly miss them and being around them um, so earth is a great place great planet and has a lot to offer and i you know i really look going look forward to going back there someday as as does misha um, can I ask both of you what you miss most? You've talked about some of the things you miss on Earth uh, there. What do you both uh, individually, maybe, Mikhail, you could go first. What do you both miss uh, about Earth? Mikhail, I would like to ask you, Scott, and you first of all, why do you most like the station? Well, I would say that uh, I would like to repeat it once again, I miss our Earth. You can not even compare it with missing your home. I miss the Earth in general. Probably you can have this feeling only here on board the station. I miss forests, I miss water, I miss rivers. I miss water that flows and not... I miss thunderstorms, winter and so on. I miss the Earth. I miss grass.
Yeah, and for me, you know, it's uh, definitely the human contact, although, you know, we're great friends, colleagues. We have a great relationship up here. You definitely miss, you know, the people that are important in your in your life uh, on Earth. Um, you know, after that, I would say uh, going outside and the, the weather like I talked about, but also, you know, the freedom, you know, freedom to do, you know, a larger variety of things to... Uh, you know, do something, stuff on your own schedule to to leave, you know, the place you're at. You definitely, you know, being up here for a really long time, appreciate the, the freedom that, uh, you know, many of us on Earth, um, you know, have the, have the privilege of. Scott, maybe I could just ask you finally then. We've got a British colleague uh, coming up there to join you. Uh, he, he said on British television in the last couple of days um, that his main, the main purpose of his mission uh, was to get young people interested in science, and he felt that if he did that, everything would be uh, worth it. Is that your driving force too? You know, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's the uh, the main purpose. Uh, you know, the space station serves a lot of functions. The science um, uh, goals of this uh, space station, I think, is is you know, for me, one of the you know maybe the top priority. It's kind of hard to to weigh one against the other, but uh, certainly, you know, uh, motivating and uh, you know, educating the uh our children in in around the world is something that's very very important and very critical to uh you know to our economies it's uh you know what it's a foundation that uh you know we need to build upon and improve upon if we're going to sustain you know economic prosperity for the, the long term so yes that is very important scott mccall is very unusual to conduct an interview uh, uh, with a couple of men in space, but it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us today.